Now let's look at permutations. Okay, a permutation is a similar situation. It's the number of different ways of ordering elements such that one element is first and one is second and one is third and so on. So it's similar to placing the cards up there as we did in the counting principle, but each one has a specific position. So really you could look at the car placement almost as a permutation. Now in the past, I like to relate this permutation to a locker combination, okay? A locker combination is actually not a locker combination. It's a locker permutation. And why? Because the order that you turn the dial on the locker, on the lock, the order matters. So if you have, let's just say your locker combination is four, 30, and 25. You have to put it in that order or your locker is not going to open. You can't make it 25, 30, and 4, or 34, and then 25. It has to be in that order. So a permutation is actually uh, the counting principle, but order matters. Okay, so let's look at this one. How many ways can you arrange six letters in six positions? So in this case, I've got six letters, A, A, B, C, D, E, F, but I've got, that means I have six events going on, so I'm giving myself six spots, okay? I'm gonna multiply each one of these spots together, but I gotta think, well, how many different ways can I choose my first letter? Well, six, I have six choices. But once one's placed, I have five, then I have four, then I have three, then I have two, then I have one. So really, guess what? That car problem was a permutation, but it's a type, it's a special type of the counting principle. Okay, so let's multiply all this together. This is gonna give me 30 and 34, 30 times four is 120, and 120 times three is 360, and 360 times two is 720 different ways that we could arrange the six letters into different, combina different patterns, okay? Now let's look at this one. What if there were the same six letters, but we only choose three of the positions? What if instead of having six events, we only have three events? Well, that's going to change things. Okay, so we have for the first choice, we still have six. For the second choice, we have five. For the third choice or position, we have four choices. So really, we only end up with 30 times 4, which is 120 different ways to choose those letters. Well, we can use the permutation equation to figure that out, where n is the total number of possible choices. In this case, it would be 6. r represents how many we're choosing, how many positions we have. In this case, this one's 3. And then we plug this into a factorial equation where we have n factorial where n is 6. So let's write 6 factorial over 6 minus 3, which is n minus r, all factorial. So we're going to take the difference between the two and take that factorial. So in this case, we have 6 factorial over 3 factorial. Well, earlier, remember how I showed you how to do factorials? So is that 6 factorial, 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 to 1, which is just 3 factorial, all over 3 factorial. Well, the 3 factorials cancel out, and yes, indeed, we got 6 times 5 times 4, which ends up being that 120. So you can kind of think of it two different ways. You can use the equation, or you can just think about the positions and the possible outcomes. Okay, so here's one. We have to think about positions. There are eight rate horses in a race. How many ways can they finish as first, second, and third place winners? Okay, that's orders important. Why is order important? Because you're talking about first, second, and third place. So you could have the same three horses, 
finish in a different order and it makes a new solution or a new answer, a new outcome. So you have to think about that. That's what a permutation is. So let's do it both ways. We'll first do it with the counting principle thinking about the events. So we have three events occurring because we have three outcomes. We have a first place winner, we have a second place winner, and we have a third place winner. So we have to think about how many choices we have. Okay, those are the events. How many ways can we have a winner with eight horses? Well, eight choices. How many ways once one has won, we have seven choices for the second place and then six choices for the third place. So let's get our calculator out and let's multiply eight times seven times six. And that gives us 336 possible ways those horses can finish for second and third. Okay, now let's look at it with a formula. Now, here's our formula. I'm going to go back and pull this formula. Okay, I'm going to erase this real fast so we can look at it a little bit better. Okay, we're going to have n factorial over n minus r factorial. So I just wanted to show you that. So n in this case is how many total do we have? Well, we have eight. And we're going to take a permutation because order matters and we want three positions. So it's eight, permutation three, eight choosing three. And that means we're gonna have an eight factorial, which is n factorial, over n minus r. So eight minus three factorial. And that gives us eight factorial. I'm just gonna go ahead and subtract the bottom so you can see it, and that's five factorial. So really, we're just taking 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial all over 5 factorial, which cancels. And I have 8 times 7 times 6, which is 336. So when we talk about showing our work, this is actually what we mean, writing the formula, it's showing that we understand what factorials are, and that's how we show our work. Okay, now let's talk about a special case of a permutation. Suppose you have a set of n objects, and some of them repeat. There's, so you have n sub 1, one of the objects is one of a kind, n sub 2, there's two of a kind, and sub three, there's three of a kind and so on. So you have repeating objects in a group. Okay, to find the number of permutations, we're gonna take n factorial, which is the total number, divided by n, fact, n sub one factorial, n sub two factorial, or whatever's being repeated. So let's look at the case of the banana, okay? Here's the case of the banana for our distinguishable permutations. Uh, and how many distinguishable ways can the letters banana be written? Well, remember, we have in banana one, two, three, four, five, six letters. So for our permutation, wouldn't we take six factorial? And then we would choose six ways. But because A occurs three times, those positions are not going to be unique because whether that A is the first A or the second A or the third A, we don't know. Those are, those are repeating in our pattern. So I have to divide by 3 factorial to represent the letter A. Then N, it occurs twice. So I have to divide by a 2 factorial because it occurred twice. Now, the B, I don't really have to worry about because it's one letter and it would be one factorial. So that's just one. So I've got to take six factorial divided by three factorial and divide times two factorial. So I'm going to write the entire sequence down. So I've got five or six times five times four times three times two 
times 1. And I'm going to divide that by 3 factorial, which is just 3 times 2 times 1. And I'm going to write it under there because I know those can cancel. Then I have another a 2 factorial. Well, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So I'm going to write that one all out. Now let's cancel out what we can. We can cancel the 3s. We can cancel the 2s. We can cancel the 1s. And then 2 does go into 4, so I could reduce this by 2. And then really, I'm just multiplying together 5 times 6 times 2. So that's 60 different ways the letters in the word banana can be arranged to make unique patterns of six letters. And that's how you figure out a distinguishable pattern. So that one's a little bit different because we have to think about repeating choices in a pattern.